Some people might call this quick. I'd barely call it peppy. Let's uh let's see from a stop. Let me try putting it in sport mode. Let's see if that helps. Right, let's try a start in sport. Okay. Yeah, you gotta give it a little bit of motivation and uh, compress the front springs. Yeah. Huh. Okay. My one major issue with this bike, a belt drive. Belt drive is bad enough on a low horsepower Harley, let alone a high horsepower and torque electric motor. <laughs> Especially for a bike built to go off-road, like this is, for a moderate light ADV. But like I said, there is a chain drive and sprocket conversion for this bike, which would make it much more suitable for the style of riding I like doing. But uh, overall, very impressed. I'm gonna turn this, this is your on switch. Okay. You saw that flash, but we're still not live. As soon as the kickstand goes up, you see the kickstand safety here. Kickstand goes up, that's on, that's live. So we are 100% live right now. Awesome. Okay. Um, as you let off the throttle and you're coasting, you will notice uh, without braking, you'll notice you should get some regen. You mm -hmm. also get regen with the braking. Okay. So that's why you get more distance in town because you're putting power back in the battery. Okay. The biggest thing here to, to, to take note of is with the kickstand up and off, because I'm going to turn this off. And I'm going to turn this switch back on because a lot of people, this is what, this is a situation you might find yourself in. Mm -hmm. You turn this on and if you're leaning on this, you could actually give it a little throttle and shoot yourself. Once that turns green, I'm live. Mm -hmm. So I tell people when you start it, cross your arms, stay away, don't touch that whatsoever. Okay. If the kick stands up and that thing turns green and you're leaning on this and, and it'll go. Okay. We're, we're live once we get in that point. Now you're going to change your ride mode, you're going to push this button, hold this button down, and then you see it flashing, and then I can go through sport, ah, okay. canyon, rain, eco, and standard. And that's going to change your ABS, your traction control, a lot of your stuff. What's the difference between sport and canyon? Um, I don't really know exactly okay. other than I know canyon gives you more regenerative property. I can see because you're not going to be going as fast through the curves and okay and that makes sense i think canyon is almost full on with all options um but it gives you more regenerative properties i personally would always ride in canyon more engine braking i want to get the most regen i can possibly get out of an electric say it's bike. more engine braking when you roll off yes. the throttle yes. okay yes and then when you hit the brakes you get it again okay in the, just in a different way so um perfect i'm going to go ahead and leave it on i'm just going to put the kickstand down and go around there's the building. There's a whole lot of features. There's reverse uh, parking mode. There's all kinds of stuff, but oh. I want you to just focus now on the ride and not play with the bells and whistles. Perfect. Okay. Reverse is interesting. <laughs> all right. Mm -hmm. I got very used to- Very slow reverse. The reason they do that is because this is can be a very sharp throttle response. Yeah. And so if you're in a parking lot, you certainly don't want to have the re throttle response be too sharp yeah. and hit a car. Yeah. So you can actually put it in mode where it slows down the throttle response and you kind of crawl around the parking lot. Okay. And you can crawl in reverse as well. It's like my KTM, it's very snappy throttle response, yeah. <laughs> but I prefer that. Yeah. So uh, what I want you to do is just come to me, give it a little throttle. nothing to it you got your brake yep. here and your brake there yep. front and rear there's nothing on that side yeah. of the motorcycle so go ahead and go around the building a couple times just to see if you got any questions before you go all right
will say that it's a bit odd not hearing anything <laughs> and not working a clutch. Brake feels pretty good. We'll start with the windshield in the lowest position. Let's see how that is. So it will roll back. If you're sitting on an incline and you let off the throttle into its neutral position, the bike will roll backwards. Interesting. I figured with an electric motor it would uh, have like a hill hold feature or something, but I guess not. below me. Weird. Let's put it in canyon mode. Oh yeah, there's a lot more regen like in canyon mode. A lot more regen when you let off the throttle in canyon mode, that's for sure. <laughs> Protection's not great, but it's not terrible either. I feel the wind right about here, hitting me right about the forehead on my helmet. Wind protection is a little bit better than the Ducati Desert X, but not by much. Having the same kind of issues with this bike's wind protection that you get out of the Desert X, being that the windscreen is very narrow and it slants back on the edges, allowing for more wind buffeting on the sides of your helmet instead of pushing it off outside of your helmet. I mean, I get, yeah, the flat windscreens don't look as nice as these curved ones do, but I'll take functionality over appearance any day. That's just me. Turning's not bad. Ooh, touching my foot a lot sooner than I thought I would. So lean angle is nowhere near as much as I thought it would be. <laughs> I will say it does have pretty nice acceleration. Let's, uh, let's see from the stop. It's got some pretty nice roll on power. As far as acceleration from a dead stop, mm, that wasn't very impressive. Let me try putting it in sport mode. 
Let's see if that helps. What are you doing? Alright, let's try a starting sport. Okay. Yeah, that was a much more aggressive start. Lifted the front tire by about two inches and then backed off. Well, it's got good, uh, good wheelie control. <laughs> but yeah, very limited lean angle. I wouldn't expect to touch the toe of my boot that soon in a turn, but... I saw another roundabout. Let's uh, let's go try that. Turning radius is pretty tight. Yeah, brake region is much less in sport mode than it is in canyon. Hmm. So some people might call this quick. I'd barely call it peppy in my personal experience. But I am a bit spoiled with riding my KTM and before that I used to ride a lot of muscle cruisers like my three Honda Magnas I owned before and my 1200 VMAX. This does not give quite the feeling of acceleration and excitement that those bikes do. And yeah this is probably faster 0 to 60 in over a quarter mile than my Magnas. I doubt it is faster than my VMAX was though. And if it is, it doesn't feel like it is. <laughs> yeah, I touched my toe a lot sooner than I thought I would. This is a nice tight curve. Man, I keep reaching for a clutch lever. That's weird. <laughs> You gotta give it a little bit of motivation and uh, compress the front strings, but it will lift the front end. <laughs> Now with the traction control set up, even in sport mode, it won't lift the front tire if you just roll on the throttle without giving it any kind of input. You literally have to compress the front springs and then roll on the throttle to get it to lift. I'm sure if you turn the traction control off, that might be a little different. <laughs> but uh... At this moment... Canyon, rain, eco, standard, sport. Canyon. Standard is probably going to be the best option for this. 
how do I switch the ABS? Nah, fuck it. Okay, it won't let you spin the rear tire even in the dirt and sand. It'll spin about maybe half a rotation of the rear tire, and then the traction control kicks in, mitigating slide. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Not bad. Suspension is pretty firm. not diving even under my weight. I feel like this has got better spring rates than even the Ducati Desert X does. Very easy to control. I am super surprised by that. <laughs> Between the electric motor traction control and super low center of gravity from the electric motor, this is very easy to ride and control in this environment. Even with these street tires on this bike, it's uh, very easy to control in this loose sand. Now, this is not deep sand, it's loose sand. There's a big difference. <laughs> Well, yeah, like that. The front tire is pushing and sliding in that deeper sand. Yeah, you can see that. But you can also see, as I get off the bike, what kind of tires we're working with. <laughs> They're not exactly suited for <laughs> this, but it's doing the thing surprisingly well. surprisingly easy to control though as you saw got back here it's got a belt drive a belt drive on a dual purpose motorcycle is a bit strange I mean if you're riding through stuff like this mostly sand <laughs> light sand shallow sand <laughs> it'll be fine because there's almost no pea gravel or rocks that are going to get kicked up out of this and into the bike it's uh other environments you're going to have to worry more about getting pea gravel or bigger rocks up in that belt, possibly snapping it. But from what I was told, they do make a chain drive conversion for this bike with actual sprockets and chain drive. So that'll be less concern once you get that done. What is that clunking I'm hearing? It must be the racks. The racks are the tag assembly or something. I hear a little bit of clunking. Yeah. Even with these street tires, this thing is surprisingly easy to control down this dirt road. I can't wait to get on a different version of this bike with actual knobby tires, a little more suited for off-road riding with a proper chain and sprocket set up. This is uh, impressive. It's very nice. Surprisingly impressive how well it handled that. Yeah, that's not much suspension travel. Looking at this, that's like five inches of suspension travel, six if you're lucky. And uh, it didn't even come close to bottoming out once. 
Let's see, will it lift the front tire at 60? No. <laughs> will it lift the front tire at 60 if you're standing? Barely. You really got to give it some oof. <laughs> so, good to know. If you're coming down the road doing 60 and there's a tree across the road, don't expect to be able to get the front end up high enough on this bike to be able to clear the tree. <laughs> you might want to slow down to about 30, then roll into it, and uh, maybe you'll be able to get the front end up, but front end up enough to clear a tree in the road. But I mean, as good as the brakes are with the electric motor regen and these J1 brakes. I think it wouldn't be too much of an issue to scrub off enough speed and then roll on the uh, throttle and lift the front in that situation. Seat's comfortable. It does have a nice seat on it. Feels like it's got some good gel, nice comfortable position. The standing position is pretty nice. I didn't even uh, make a comment about that riding through the sand and the dirt, but uh, that's because I had nothing bad to say about it. They have the ergos for the standing position pretty damn good for off-road riding. It was, uh, it felt so natural to me to stand up and go down that dirt road. I didn't even think to make a comment about how bad it is, like the Desert X Rider Triangle. <laughs> Let's see, standing up, yeah. Standing ergos are great on this bike. Handling. Handling while standing up feels pretty good. A lot of buffeting at interstate speed. It is kind of noisy if you're going to be riding down the interstate on it. We'll need to get a better windscreen. But that just seems to be the common theme of things with uh, motorcycles these days. Put it in Canyon. Let's see what the uh, takeoff is like in that versus sport. I mean, the acceleration in Canyon's not terrible, but it's nowhere near as aggressive as it is in Sport. The little off-road section, that was the grass down there? Yeah. Okay. Just don't go too far. Keep it upright. Oh, definitely. No issues with that. <laughs> it does have a very... Uh, nimble handling with the low center of gravity in the electric motor it's pretty impressive it reminds me of my 790 adventure with the slow slung glass tank the low slung gas tanks mm. gives it a real low center of gravity too this is a uh, probably the closest thing i've felt to the weight balance of my 790 adventure similar cool i'll be back in a minute Yeah, the standing position on this is great. It's very similar to my KTM standing position with much better ergos than the Desert X is. Suspension's pretty good. That didn't bottom out. For as limited as the suspension travel is on this bike, it's sprung pretty well. Oh, look at that iguana. 
That's a big boy. <laughs> oh man. Welcome to Florida, y'all. All the wild iguanas. <laughs> Let's see what it's like on the side hill. Not bad, especially considering these are straight up street tires on this bike. Not bad at all. The more I ride this, the more I like it. And I am not in favor of EVs at all. I am an ice guy through and through. But you know what? An EV ADV bike is not a bad idea, y'all. Not at all. All right, I'm gonna turn around this way, away from the water's edge. <laughs> Probably be the wiser choice got a pretty good turning radius set down control on this is not bad either I can feel the front move a little bit more while I'm sitting down versus standing but it's not terrible Yeah, this would make a, a pretty damn good light ADV cruiser, highway touring ADV cruiser. Could use a better windscreen for the touring part, but I am super impressed with how well it handles light off-road stuff. I could ride this all day. It's comfortable enough to ride it all day. Let me see if I can cross that same little stick while I'm sitting down and see how it feels. Oh, where'd that iguana go to? <laughs> did I already pass the iguana? I think I did. Yeah, I passed the iguana already. All right, let's cross that stick sitting down. I kind of missed it. Whatever, it's not bad. The suspension is pretty good on this.